Hey everyone, welcome back, and this is the accumulator pattern. So this will be part one, and we're going to discuss a little bit uh, more in depth a very common algorithm that's going to come up, and which uses nearly all of the things that we've done so far. So the case is we want to write a function that takes in an array of numbers and returns a new array containing the even numbers from the input array. Uh, so the steps for this basic algorithm are this. First, identify the inputs and write a function definition with those inputs. How many are there? What are their types? So in this case, here's our function. I'm going to take it on over. So the way we write it, and we're going to write it long form. I would encourage you to do this just to get a like a uh, muscle memory of writing that function. So numbers, input is one array of numbers. So we've got one input, the numbers. Input is that one array of numbers. So there you go, nothing too serious. Then we want to identify the output. What will the function return when the input is normal? And when, what will the function return if the input is empty? Now, you're going to see this more often uh, as you get further into the course, where there'll be something called edge cases. And these edge cases define situations where the input is either empty, uh, missing, or falls into a specific case that we don't really need to work through. If the algorithm is designed to get all the even numbers in an array, and you get like an object, then it's like, well, I don't need to worry about that. We're not going to consider that, but what we will consider is the case where the input array that we're getting all of the even numbers for comes in empty. Theoretically, you might be able to start considering that if I want to get all the even numbers in an array of numbers, I would want to look at all of the numbers, decide which ones are even, and then maybe add them to an array that I return from the function. But I don't need to do any of that if the input array is empty. I could probably just say, okay, well, just give me back an empty array. So here is the unformatted markdown. And it's funny, I could show you the code for this, like in the markdown code. It's not only like code, it's more like just markdown. But this part right here is exactly written exactly the same as this. But for some reason, this formats correctly and this doesn't. So not really sure why. But that's not really that big of a deal. So filter even elements. If the input is empty, what do we return? And I'm going to say, let's just return an empty array. You'd figure, though, that in the definition of the problem, either it would tell you what you want to return in this edge case, and that's also a great opportunity to ask your interviewer or ask a person you're working with about the edge case. It kind of implies that you're thinking about all possible avenues, and maybe they want you to return null or undefined or a string that says, you know, input array is empty. It all depends on the context that you're working in. We're also going to define that the output is a new array of even numbers. So we have both the outputs from one for an edge case and one that's sort of loosely defined based on what the problem actually wants us to do. Now here's where we get into the, uh, the fun stuff. We want to design a result variable which we're going to call an accumulator. And the reason that it's called an accumulator, at least the reason that I can come up with, is that you seem to accumulate values into it over a process of iteration or something during the function, and then you return it. You want to initialize it to whatever output is in the empty case. And so I'm going to show you what they mean by that. So here's our function at this point. Here's our edge case. Numbers.length is equal to zero, return an empty array. Then we're going to design a define a result variable and return it. So you want to figure that like in here, that's where we're going to be doing something, where we fill this with even numbers. And one thing that I have seen people do before is take this part, move it above their edge case, and this is just a preference thing, and then rather than return an empty array here, just return even numbers. Now the idea would be that we are organizing our edge case to take place just after we define our result variable. And it's really kind of a dealer's choice situation for that. Determine how you would iterate, how many times are you going to iterate. So what I would say is that if the input is an array of numbers, and we want to iterate over that array of numbers, I would suggest a for loop would be the simplest way for us to do that. We left our edge case up here. I like to leave the edge cases at the beginning and have them separate from any, like, you know, uh, what would you say, any actual processes for the real function, but it's a preference thing that I don't have uh, any real substance to attach to. It's more just kind of like, that's how I did it the first couple of times, so that's how I do it now. But here's the idea for this step, is that we will iterate over the entire input array, and this is the form of our iteration. So in here, this is where the main algorithm, or we're going to be accumulating things into the even numbers array, is going to happen, here on line 10 alter the accumulator even numbers using the information in the loop numbers at i. So this is where the fun part happens, which I think I've said that before, but I think all this stuff is fun. 
So we've got the parts of the function that we've written previously, edge case, defined our accumulator, returned our accumulator, iterating over what we need to iterate over. And this is the pattern, right? Define an accumulator, iterate over something, or iterate in some fashion, and then adjust the accumulator as you go. So check if the current number is even. So we're going to say, is the current number when modulo 2 is applied to it, result was 0? And if you remember from the modulus section, or operators and methods for numbers, uh, this is how you check if a number is even. So if it is, we push the current number to even number. So this is how we affect the accumulator during the iteration. Oh, good, and that's it. So that's pretty much the, you know, our function. Now, one of the things that we've done previously was we had our test cases built for us. I'm just gonna build a quick test case. So filter even elements, we're gonna call that function, and I'm gonna save that to an output. Filter even elements is going to be called on an array, and I'm gonna put some odd and some even elements in there. Then I want to console.log my output. And this is where I'm gonna write something that you'll see a lot, which is basically like the output should be, and the output should be, let's see, we want even numbers, so two, four, six. So if we run this and we get that, we're looking good. Now the other thing would be, you might wanna test your edge case. So if you tested your edge case, you would enter an empty array and see if you get an empty array back. We do, so let's return it to what it was. And there you go. So there's our accumulator pattern. First, we get rid of any edge cases, but the real accumulator pattern is define an accumulator of some kind, perform some kind of iteration, affect the accumulator in some way, and then return the accumulator after the iteration is complete, or after the uh, affecting of the accumulator has completed. And that might be the case where we would use like a break or continue statement because the accumulator has made it to some point that we need at that, uh, that you would just return immediately. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.